All right, just a quick summary of, of the solving. So the theory of solving the general cubic involves that substitution. X equals Y minus one third A. It leads to this equation, the depressed cubic, uh, where A equals that and B equals that. Now you haven't seen these yet. Where do they come from? Well, they come from this and the enormous amount of algebra that results. All right, and condensing down and equating coefficients, you get <coughs> those. We did it numerically, remember? We did it for a numerical example. We came up with our values of a and b. Um, if you are keeping everything general, then you get these. All right? um, it, the article has the details. The theory of solving the depressed cube <coughs> involves this substitution, y equals u plus v. So I'm just writing in terms of y here, because it's a context. y equals u plus v, deriving two simultaneous equations, deriving a quadratic, combining the two solutions of that quadratic to get here. Rapid example. Here's our run sheet, right? If you were going to solve 20 in a row, you'd want to have that in front of you. Uh, and of course, we have to work backwards. We have to build the building blocks and get to there. So it, this is, the idea of this rapid example <coughs> is not to you know, see what the solution is, but to see if you were doing this a lot, how much work would be involved in each one. Mm. So there's your A, substitution. There's your B, substitution. There's your delta. There's your Y. No complex numbers this time, so they're now always complex. Right? That's why it's a discriminant. It, you look to see whether that thing is negative or positive to find out. Um, all right, and so obviously a bit of calculator work is there, so required there, but and they add up to our solution. So not a nice solution, that's a randomly chosen equation. And then the x equals y minus a third a, so we get that is our solution to that. All right? And I don't know what the other two solutions are. 